previously I made a video about backing up my Unraid server to another Unraid server, and that's what this video is also about, but this time we're going to use a container called Lucky Backup. This way it's a little bit more user friendly and doesn't involve the command line too much. I'll leave a link in the video description below for how to do this, so that way you can follow along step by step, and that way you don't have to feel rushed or pause a video, and you can go at your own pace as you see fit. So without any further writing, let's go ahead and take a look at Lucky Backup and how to use it to back up your Unraid server to another Unraid server. Let's get started. So like I mentioned earlier, we're gonna be doing a Unraid server to Unraid server backup. So this is our main server here uh, that I have. This is called Transcensia. And then my second dairy server is called PNAS. And all of the transfers are gonna happen locally over this 10 gig switch. Now you could do this um, over a VPN, but the setup for that is a lot more complex. So just for this video, we're gonna stick to our basics. Now, first thing you wanna do is go to your main server. In this case, it is called Transensia. We're gonna to go to apps uh, by using the community applications plugin, which I assume you have installed already. If not, you should definitely have it installed. I don't know why you're using Unraid without it. And then we're gonna do a search for Lucky Backup. Now there should only be one option from our developer ick777, I think that's how you say his name, uh, or itch, I don't know, whatever, anyway. So we're gonna be using his, click on actions, and then install. And there's a couple things we're gonna change in here. So the first of which is we're gonna switch this console shell command from shell to bash. Uh, we can leave it on bridge mode, you can change this if you like, but for this example, we're gonna stick to bridge mode. If you have other containers that are running on port 8080, this is very important for you. You're gonna to wanna to change this off the default port 8080 if you have other containers that are already using this port or else you won't be able to VNC into this container. Uh, I don't have any other containers that are running on 8080, so I'm just gonna leave it as port 8080 right now. And finally, the last thing we're gonna to wanna to change is the run as root user flag. Uh, we're gonna set that from false to true. So now that we have made all those settings, we've changed this to bash, we're leaving 8080 and we're leaving, or we're changing root, run as root user to true. We can hit apply and this will download and install the container. So this is gonna take a few minutes. So we'll just let this run until it's done. Didn't mean to make that rhyme, but it happens all the time. Awesome, lucky backup is finally installed. So we're gonna go back to the Docker tab and then we're simply going to open a console. So I left click on the icon and I'm clicking console. This is gonna bring up a terminal window essentially inside of the container where we can execute some commands. Now, this is the part that is tricky, but I promise you it is not that bad. So the first thing we're gonna do is do something called generating SSH keys. So that way the lucky backup container can use rsync uh, without any intervention from us as the user and it'll automatically be able to um, back up all of the data as required. So what we're gonna do is generate those keys by typing in the command SSH key gen. We're gonna hit dash or space dash T R S A. We're gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask us where we would like to save this key pair what we're gonna do is just hit enter. So that's gonna put that in the slash root dot SSH directory. So we need to remember that. And then it's gonna ask us if you want a passphrase. We don't need a passphrase or else this will make our lives a little bit more complicated. So we'll just hit enter for nothing. Hit enter again to verify that we don't want anything. And it has generated us a key pair. So now what we're gonna to wanna to do is simply copy the uh, public key that we just generated over to our uh, backup server. So the system that we want to actually back up to. In this case for me, it's called PNAS, as I mentioned before. So we're gonna do CP, I'm sorry, SCP slash root dot SSH ID underscore RSA dot pub. So this is the public key that we're gonna send to PNAS. And PNAS's IP address is 10.10.10.9. And we're gonna put that in the same directory. So for fun, we're gonna type it all the way out, but there is a nice way uh, to do this without having to type in all of that garbage again, but whatever. 
So we're gonna put it in the same directory, root.ssh slash, hit enter. And since it's the first time we're doing this, it's gonna ask us, hey, I don't know who this is. Do you want me to add this guy to my known hosts file? So we're gonna say, yeah, uh, we can trust this guy, just send the data. All right, cool. So now what we need to do from here is type in exit. We want to leave the page. And then we're gonna go ahead and restart our lucky backup container. Now we need to go to our remote server, remote or backup server, which is PNAS. And in the top right corner on the uh, default theme, we're gonna see this little arrow with a underscore next to it. This is gonna open a terminal window. And I promise you this is the last time we'll be in command line from here. So what we're gonna wanna do now is change directory. So CD slash root slash SSH. We'll do an ls-la so we can see what files we're looking at. We can confirm that we have sent the public key to the system. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna type in cat cat id underscore rsa dot pub two right arrows and authorized keys. So just like that we'll press enter and what this is gonna do is take the um, hash that's in there, I think it's a hash, it's gonna take that public key in there and host name in there and just put that inside of another file called authorized keys. So this is what you should have now if you've done everything correctly. And then from here, you can type an exit again, close that terminal window and you're done. That is all the command line work you need to do. And I think that was pretty painless, I must say. All right. Now we wanna go back to our main server where we actually wanna copy our data from and then send it to PNAS. So we're gonna go back to the Docker tab. We'll open up the web UI for Lucky Backup. We don't have anything here and I wanna pre-warn you that I'm gonna show you a bug that exists currently in this software that actually crashes this and makes you have to start all the way over. Um, so I'll show you how that happens first and then we'll just go back and then set it all up. So typically you would just hit the add button on the right side. We'll just call this backup because I know this is gonna crash. We'll list our sources, user ISO. This is the directory that we're gonna back up. And we want to back up this, do not create, advanced, remote. I'm gonna go really quickly through this, but I promise you on the next run we'll go very, very uh, shortly. I wanted to show you what not to do at first. Dot nine, SSH 22, open, oh, oh, and it crashed. Okay, so you don't wanna set it up this way, so unfortunately we're gonna have to do it the slightly longer way, but once we do this, it's really painless from here. So we're gonna connect again because the container crashed, everything is blanked out, didn't save any of our work. So we're gonna wanna create a new way to back up uh, let's say a directory. And I always do single directory to single directory backups. Um, so that way I don't have to worry about overriding anything I don't want rsync to overwrite or anything that I might do to accidentally overwrite directories or create subdirectories where they won't be. Um, so we're only gonna be copying one share to another share and all of the shares on my remote system are named identically to what they are on the host or on Transcendia. Um, so we're gonna, on the right side here, we're gonna add a new task. We're gonna call it backup ISOs. Our source is gonna be slash mount user ISOs. Our destination is going to be mount user. And we're just gonna hit okay so we can avoid that crash. Then we're gonna go back in and modify backup ISOs. We're gonna change the type from backup source inside of destination to synchronize source and destination. We're gonna click on advanced. We're gonna click on remote. Check mark this box that says use remote host. We're doing all of our copies uh, using the root user, which is not exactly ideal. Uh, you should have a dedicated user when you're doing backups. So this is kind of a security violation, but I'm okay with it. You can do whatever you want at home, but again, you should have a user that can back up uh, stuff between your servers. 
Uh, we're going to check mark the SSH bot box. Uh, the default port for SSH that it uses is 22. Uh, you don't need to do any port forwarding when this is local to your uh, system at home. And then we're going to need to select the private key that we created earlier. So it's just ID underscore RSA. We'll hit open. And then on the destination, we're going to go to the same destination address. So it should look like that. And we're going to hit OK. And we're done. So now we can check mark this box here. We can click run. A bunch of stuff should happen. And this might take a minute, so we'll just let this ride. Okay, while we wait for this to finish, I'll just go ahead and show you what I mean by I have matching shares on both the primary server and the backup server. So this is Transcendia. Uh, here are all the shares I have. And then if we go over to my secondary server and click on the shares there, you can see that they have the same exact names between the two. So when I quickly switch back and forth between them, you won't really see a difference except in the order of which they exist. Um, so all of the directories that I back up are downloads, import, ISOs, L drive, SPIC share, TV shows, and YouTube. I don't back up anything else. I don't back up my app data, domains, or any of that stuff. You can do that if you feel like you need to at home, so that way you don't lose your um, unread configuration, any virtual machines, or however your setup is, you can totally customize this inside of Lucky Backup. Okay, so it's finally done. That took a little bit of time, and unfortunately we're limited by the uh, speed of the hard drives and not the network itself. So even though I have 10 gig networking, um, I'm limited to the slowest drive of the array on the backup server. Uh, but I was still getting pretty good speeds there as you can see or saw about 185 megabytes at peak. So we're gonna click done now and we've completed our first backup. And for fun, we're gonna check to see what files exist in the folder um, that we just backed up to. And here they all are. So we now have a lucky backup folder, a hidden directory of snapshots and all of the ISOs that I've ever downloaded in the past and yeah well that was pretty much it some other cool things about lucky backup if you're interested is you can do these on a schedule um, so adding a schedule is pretty simple you select your default profile and all of uh, everything that's in your default profile that has a task will be executed here and so you can set time of day time of month you know even the hours and minutes and uh, you do set that here and then once you've set your schedule you're going to make sure you hit ok and cron it now this is going to re require that you restart the container or else your cron job will not execute not a big deal that's actually pretty standard um, apparently you've got other things that you can do as well like managing snapshots which i haven't figured out yet so maybe one day in the future i'll make a new video when i do figure out how to uh, handle all the snapshots or restore from snapshots and that is basically how you use Lucky Backup Container. If this video was too hard to follow along with or move too quickly, remember that there is a guide in the video description below. And while you're there, consider shopping on our online store that is at spxlabs.com forward slash shop. And you might find some used, slightly used home lab equipment there that you would like to have and own in your own home lab or even might need. And remember, if you're local, you can come to pick it up to miss all of those shipping costs. And with that, I want to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time. Peace.